Well, so again, yeah, Sean, what a golf hole. I mean, it's just, uh, you know, again, very African. Yeah, you're not going to find anything like that anywhere in the world. Where do you finish a hole where you, you can see crocodile, lion, uh, hippo, buffalo, elephant? How's it, Derek? Um, tell us about your role that you currently have or position at South Broom. So I'm the, the golf professional, golf director. So, I mean, my role here is, is basically it's running golf. Uh, I, I'm, a, I'm a golf pro, so I'm teaching here, uh, running tournaments, marketing the play, marketing uh, South Broome Golf Club. So everything to do with golf is, is what I'm in charge of. Yeah. Excellent. Derek, I just want to touch on your playing career. It was incredibly illustrious. I understand you've won on the Canadian Tour. You've won three times on the mini tours in America. And if I've got it correct, you've won eight tournaments on the Sunshine Tour. Yeah, that, that's correct. So, yeah, I suppose my biggest win was was in Canada uh, on the Canadian Tour, which is a, 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 an amazing tour. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a leap from there trying to get onto the US Tour. But anyway, so I won the Tournament Players Championship in Canada. Um, and then I won some, uh, you know, when I used to go to America, I used to play a lot of tournaments that were um, kind of not, not mini tour events, but they were tournaments like the Massachusetts Open and whatever. And they, they've gone on to become Hogan Tour events and they've gone on then to become, I suppose, the Corn Ferry Tour tournaments. So, yeah, so I, I was very lucky to win there three times uh, in the early, uh, the late 80s. Yeah. Wow. What, a, what an achievement, Jim. Would so yeah. We might corn we might corn the phrase that your your goat achievement was then the Canadian win. You say. Yeah, I think I mean that was a it was a proper win. I mean I mean, I, you know over there I mean I beat in fact I played with Roger Vessels in, in the final round. So two South Africans playing together in the final round. But I mean, a, a name that I did beat in that tournament was Mike Weir, who went on to win the Masters. Um, so I mean it, they they were really good fields. Uh, so, yeah, I, I'm really proud of that win. I suppose in this country, my biggest tournament was actually finishing, not winning. It was finishing second to Ernie in the Ernie Else in the, in the 1992 South African Open at Houghton. Wow. So, which was also obviously a really big field. But, uh, yeah, so, but I mean, you know, when, whenever you win, it's super special. People don't remember who came second to Ernie. Uh, so, <laughs> to win Canada. But yeah, you, you're certainly not going to forget, which is fantastic. Derek, I'm just going to move on. And, and I've thoroughly enjoyed going through your list of your, on your signature course. There's some absolutely fantastic golf courses. Um, I just want to talk yeah. about some of the holes and, and just try and not highlight. And just I, I love the fact that the, so some of these holes have, have real significance for you and through your experience in golfing. So you mentioned Durban Country Club twice, the first hole there and the fifth hole. Do you want to talk to us slightly about yeah. an opening stretch at DCC? The first five holes, I mean, are world class, aren't they? They, they really are, Sean. I mean, it's uh, yeah, you, you know, you you can when you pick your favorite golf course, you can almost name those five holes. Uh, but I, I think the first hole at Durban Country Club, depending on what the weather's doing, it's the most magnificent opening hole. You know, there are a whole lot of options. Uh, it's a small green to hit to. You can be hitting anything from a wedge in there if you take a chance to smashing a four iron. So I, I think it's just one of the most iconic, beautiful um, opening holes with the clubhouse behind. And then you're hitting uh, down a, a pretty narrow fairway that turns to the left and an elevated green. Just what a wonderful, wonderful opening hole. And then, and then the others there, before we get to the fifth, the, the second, what a great par three, amazing par three. I mean, not easy to hit. It's a good distance. So it's around about 180 meters from the back. Yeah. Uh, obviously, the wind makes a difference. It's elevated tee, so you, you feel the wind. Uh, the third hole is just super special. Uh, it, it's just, you know, when you're choosing your, your, your goat hole, goat golf course, uh, you know, it's, it's where do you stop and what do you put over another? But I mean, it's hard not to choose a third at, um, at uh, Durban Country Club. 
Uh, it's just an amazing straightaway par five, uh, narrow bunkers, bush, indigenous bush up to a, a wonderful green. So it's such a super hole. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a goal, it's a hole you can be very aggressive or you can be quite um, sensible, about, sensible about what you're doing. Uh, the fourth hole is a wonderful little par three downhill to a little tuck green in, in sort of a little bit of a cove down the bottom there. And, and again, obviously the wind makes a big factor. Uh, and then the fifth hole, which I say is my fifth hole on, on GOAT, is just absolutely an amazing hole. Because you, you drive to a plateau, uh, which is bunkered, it's narrow, the hole moves slightly left to right, uh, the out of bounds the entire length of the hole down the right, uh, indigenous bush down the left, and you then hit to a small target. Um, you know, what has changed a little, uh, Durban Country Club is not known as a long golf course anymore, and some of the long hitters now whip it right over the plateau. Uh, I played with Brandon Stone there, and he, I think he hit a wedge into the green, which is... <laughs> We always used to hit four irons and five irons and woods in there. But it's just an amazing, amazing golf hole. Uh, so, yeah, those two really deserve to be there. Derek, the next course I want to talk to you about is, again, is one another course that you've actually put two holes in is Umut. I just want to maybe yeah. just ask you a question. Is, is that quite a significant golf course for you? Because it's, was it one of maybe your first real significant tournament you'd won in winning the 1984 SA Amateur Stroke Play? Yeah, sure. So it, it, it really is special to me, uh, obviously for winning the Stroke Play in, in 84. Um, and, and then my, my first tournament there as a pro, the Goodyear, I finished, I think I, Dennis Watson won it. I finished, I think I finished fourth. So I had some success there, but I think even more than that, Sean, it's, it's, it's just, it, it's maybe the only genuine, genuine links in, in Africa. I mean, I haven't played that much north of Zimbabwe, but I mean, it, it's a proper, proper links. Whereas, you know, some of the other golf courses that call themselves links as they are, but they're not proper. Uh, Humewood is an absolute proper links. And once again, I did, I only chose two holes, but because there are some other great holes in golf, but uh, you, you, for me, you, you cannot leave Humewood out of the picture. That, that's just my personal thing. I, I, I think Lynx Golf is just amazing. And I, I think Humewood is just an <laughs> outstanding golf course. And those two holes that I chose are, are two really meaningful holes. One, one not that long, the third, and, uh, and then 10 is long. And obviously, again, Humewood is very much reliant on wind, which is what Lynx Golf is all about. Uh, but just a wonderful, wonderful golf course. Excellent. Derek, another, another hole that jumped out at me, and I've not had the fortune of playing there, but that's insignificant. But again, I understand in 92, you won an event called the Kalahari Classic. So for a lot of our international viewers, yeah. they're not going to quite understand when we talk about Kalahari, but you are talking about a proper desert course. So what the, yeah. you mentioned the six hole, at, at, which used to be called Session, it's now called Kalahari Country Club. But what, what stood out for you? Uh, right. From the six-hole decision. So, so again, Sean, it's it's just a magnificent hole that kind of sweeps through the bushveld. You know, it's very much, it's it's yeah, you know, the Kalahari. So you you you're heading towards kind of deserty type uh, terrain. Uh, there there these thorn trees that are uh, are very much a hazard. You you got to know where you're placing the ball. But it's just, it's just absolutely magnificent. It's very, very African. You know, it's not a, you, you, you can see this golf course and that hole. There, there are a few holes, but this is amazing. Before we get onto your home course, I think another, another hole I would just like to ask you about is the 13th you've chosen at Leopard Creek. Do you, do you think there is a, a better, course that typifies golf in South Africa when you've got a magnificent golf course on the border of one of the most esteemed national parks in the world well so again yeah Sean what a golf hole I mean it's just uh, you know again very African yeah, you're not going to find anything like that anywhere in the world where do you finish a hole where you, you can see crocodile, lion uh, hippo, buffalo elephant 
uh, it's just a not only not only the fact that you can see the Kruger Park from the green. I tell you, it's just it's it's even if you couldn't see the Kruger Park, it's a magnificent golf hole. So, Derek, just a cup one one or two last questions. I want to talk to you about South Blue. And again, I've had the fortune of playing there, and it is really one of the gems on the South Coast, and not only the South Coast. Um, you've chosen two holes there. Now, I think that in, personally on South Bloom, you could have chosen a couple more. The fourth um, is a spectacular little par three. But just talk us through maybe the eighth and the 17th at South Bloom. Yeah, so, so, yeah, I mean, first of all, just getting back to the fourth. I mean, it's like, how did I not choose the fourth? Well, the, the, it, it is a magnificent little hole in the setting and everything, but I, but you know I, what I did, I chose Otaniqua's fourth hole in over it uh, because that is proper proper. I think the, the fourth at Otaniqua is one of the prettiest, best playing par threes I've ever played anywhere in the world. Wow! The eighth, it really is a good golf hole. I mean, we you know Southam's a very short golf course, but. Our four par threes have a bit of everything. You know, we have length, we have different direction. We have, uh, no matter which way the wind blows, they're all in different directions. Uh, so our par three is a second to nobody. And, and the eighth hole is super special. And, and uh, I was involved with Rule Harems in, in re totally redesigning the eighth hole uh, because it used to be a bit of a nothing little hole. And, and it, uh, we, we made it... Uh, really special so for, for me as well not only is it just a great hole I, I was also very much involved in the redesigning of of the hole and the reconstruction of of the eighth hole Derek thank you so much I really appreciate it like uh, Sean I look forward to seeing all this eh? yeah Wonderful. excellent John and, thank, and then yeah I'll certainly get it through to you before we put it anywhere and um I thank you once again like uh, thank yes, you Derek, have a good one eh? thank you right okay Sean